We are now going to take a look at ways to adjust how different slide states are presented. To learn how to create different slide states, see the video on doing that. We will use the same experiment in this explanation as we did in that video. Using multiple slide states can be very helpful in simplifying your data analysis. Rather than logging the data under multiple object names, it will log it under a single variable. In this case, it will log it under the stimulus slide. Once we have multiple slide states created, we can determine how they are presented using an attribute. So, in our block list, we have an attribute called state name. Under it are the names of each slide state. So you can see that there's text, audio, and graphic, which match these here. To adjust the order in which the states are presented, we need to change the selection properties of the list. So, if we go to this list, we can open the properties window, go to selection, and we can choose random or whichever option is appropriate. We can also change how many cycles that list goes to by making adjustments in the reset exit tab. So back on our stimulus object, we need to tell it to reference that list. So in active state, we need to put the attribute state name. Normally this would be just set as default or whichever slide was up. You may also notice that we have a nested list set up. This list includes the file names that the stimulus slide will need to reference. You can see that I do not have the folder locations or file extensions on this list. Since the word audio and graphic stimuli were all named the same way for each object, and since each kind of media has the same file extension, there's an easy way for us to reference the files. On the stimulus object, we can go to the sub-object for one of these. And you can see that we have first the resource folder that the files are saved in. Then we ref reference the audio name attribute. And then we put .wav after it. This avoids the task of going through and adding the folder name and file extensions to each word. On the graphic state, you can see that we've done something similar um, with the bitmap file extension. After we've run a participant, we can look at the data file. Here we can see that all of the data for the stimulus slide is logged in the same columns. To determine which state the slide was in, we can simply look at the state name column and then look across to the accuracy, reaction time, or response for that trial.